Welcome to She Got Game, a celebration of women in gaming. I am Chelsea Casarubias. I'm a sophomore here at Morgan State with a multimedia studio major. I'm the inaugural president of Morgan State's um, eSports program. Hi guys, I'm Tiana Watson. I am a multi-platform production major. I'm a Twitch streamer. And before we begin our conversation with the amazing Karima Winter, we, went, we want to provide you with a brief history on the MSU Bears eSports program. Our program was founded in October 2020, 2020 when our director and head coach, Taryn Morgan, was asked, was asked with engaging students virtually in the beginning of the pandemic. The first eSports competition that our university participated in was the HBCU Battlegrounds Call of Duty tournament that was hosted by Community, 300 Entertainment, DTLR, despite Coach Morgan putting the team together in a week and us being considered the underdog, we ended up winning the tournament. Fast forward from where we are today, we will have over 80 members signed up for our program, won two championships in our first official season, and the university is currently working on creating a game developing ma major as well. Our program has been great, has been making great strides. However, there's so much work when it comes to balancing the playing field in video game development. Out of all the game developers in the world, only 24% of them are women. <laughs> That's why She Got Game, a celebration of women in gaming, was created. Not only to inspire the next generation of game developers, but provide information on many ways that women can be in and other interested individuals can enter the gaming industry. Now that you guys know a little bit more about Morgan State University's eSports program and the She Got Game interview series, it is time for us to talk to our guest, Community's Creative Director, Ms. Karima Winter. Mm. <laughs> hey. Hi, Karima. Hi, how are you all? Good, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. You know, we're in the middle of planning two large events right now. So uh, it's a lot going on on my plate, but I'm glad I get to sit aside and talk to some Morgan State Bears. We're glad to have you. Yeah, thank you thank so you much again for joining us. So yeah. we will first like to start off. So so more, tell us more about who you are and what do you do in community? Well, as you said, my name is Karima Winter, and I am the creative director for Community. So essentially, that is what we also have just came up with a brand new name called Head of Imagination. Um, we got that from Pharrell. But uh, basically, what it exactly what it sounds like, anything social, like social media content, um, when you think about when we go on trips, like all that, the TikToks, Twitter, the Instagram, that is just what I do and what I plan um, I also work closely with our talent when we use um, when we have celebrities that come in and work with us for our events. I work with them to get the content out if I need like headshots from them to put on the graphics. All that is what my job entails. Um, and I also am a part time Twitch streamer as well. Um, and I do that as soon as I get home. So I often like to say I am Hannah Montana, Miley Cyrus. So by day I have the wig on from Miley Cyrus and by night I am Hannah Montana, a whole different person. Um, AKA Supreme Sensei. So that's just like what I do on a day to day basis. Um, yeah. I got you. So, what were you doing prior to working in the game industry? And like, how did you make your transition into the gaming industry? Yeah, well, um, I actually started immediately uh, into the game industry after graduating from Towson University in um, December 2020. So it was amid the pandemic. Um, I have always been in the gaming industry in terms of a streamer and a gamer. Um, but I went to school for sport management. So I did think one day I was going to own a football team, probably the Ravens, ironically, because that's like one of the home teams. Either that or the Commanders, that's what they're called now, Washington. <laughs> Um, I thought I was going to be owning a football team, the first woman ever to, hold, um, to own a football team. But um, when I got to my junior year, I started to learn more about esports. I started to be more um, involved into Twitch communities and seeing that people were making great money um, in this field. And I just knew that I'm not a pro gamer. Um, I'm not good at the games, not all of them at least. So I was like, where can, where can I fit in? And so I started to do more research and I did an internship with Events VC, 
Um, and I was, that was the first time ever doing an esports program. And I was one of the first interns for that. Um, so I did that and it led me to meeting Ryan, who is the CEO of Community. Um, and I kept in co close contact with him. So I just never, that, if that's, a, I guess, a, pro, um, a, a testimony, never, ever drop your contacts. Um, I kept in close contact with Ryan. Anytime I was in Atlanta, I hit him up like, hey, I got something going on. I'm interested to see what y'all got going on at Access Replay, which is a studio that we use um, a lot for our events. And I just, you know, I kept that going. And up until I graduated, I was basically in sports. And then as soon as I graduated, Ryan hit me up, said, hey, are you still looking to move to Atlanta? Are you still looking for a job? Because I got something for you. Um, do you know anything about marketing and all these things? Mind you, I did not go to school for marketing. Um, I did a lot of marketing with my dance team and myself as a streamer, but I didn't have any actual experience with another organization. So they did put all their trust in me. Um, it comes from my this huge personality I have and just me being on social media that just kind of, that, that, that gave it away. And then also being familiar with um, Photoshop and Adobe Suite and all that. So that's, that's where I was. It's a complete change, obviously, from going from gamer to being in the industry. And this is a nonprofit. So I've never thought I would be working with a nonprofit as well. That is amazing. That is. What a like climb, actually. <laughs> like yeah, no, I mean, I am, I am extremely blessed to say that I got to go into the industry that I wanted to be in at, right after college. And I, I love to, you know, inspire young, you know, students that are in college because where I was my senior year, I had no idea. I, I was stressed. I was like, wow, um, there's this thing called post um what is it called? It's right after you graduate, a lot of people go through it. It's like stress because you on often you do not just jump into your career field. I was working at Nordstrom Warehouse right before Ryan hit me up. And this is right after between I was graduating and then right after I graduated. So you can imagine I had no idea that this was going to happen. I thought I was going to be working at Nordstrom Warehouse for like two years and then maybe find my career. But it just it just happened. So it's like you kind of always have to be ready because I had to move to Atlanta. And I'm from D.C., so that was a jump. And I don't have family in Atlanta. So I, he literally was asking me something that I never thought I would tell my mom. Like, hey, mom, um, yeah, I have to go to Atlanta. Like, can you imagine? Like, I've been with my mom for 23 years, and now you're like, you're doing what? I'm like, yeah, I got to go. They're asking me to leave, like, tomorrow. So pack up your bags and get, <laughs> get to Atlanta. We need to So imagine, right? <laughs> overnight sensation exactly <laughs> but it's dope to actually have that type of opportunity to happen because it doesn't happen a lot like having opportunities right outside of college and creating like stressing on creating those uh connections with people so that you can you know hey like exactly. i liked you so come work for me that's so dope yeah. so what i would say is what do you think has become like a, a most frustrating part of you becoming a creative director? But what also is the most rewarding part that you that you've seen? It, I have a, one answer for both of those that works hand in hand. If you if you ever heard someone say like, "There's a positive and a negative to it." Um, I was by myself. It was just me and Chris, who's a co-founder and chief of marketing for Community. When I joined, it was just me and Chris. Um, and when what we were doing. We were starting from the bottom. I think when I joined community, we had about 800 followers. So we were starting as if it was my own my own personal page. Mind you, I've been doing this for myself for a year, trying to figure out how do I blow up, right? How do I get 100K followers and become viral? So it's like now I'm not only doing it for myself. I'm trying to do it for a nonprofit who also has several entities. We have HBCU Esports, and there's also Nexus Entertainment, where, where it's the music side. So we're, not, we're trying to grow a million things here. Um, so that was a challenge I, I faced. I was by myself. I was doing the graphics. I was scheduling things. I was making sure we had tweets going out. And we were. I was responding to comments and DMs. And you can imagine just like trying to control a Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube for one page. And then months later, adding on HBCU Esports as another separate thing. Like these are, these are things that, so you have to double that, right? And then triple it because you have your own personal um, mm -hmm. brand that you're trying to grow. Mm -hmm. So that was a challenge, but it was rewarding because when I did it and I was doing it well, people noticed and I could take credit, right? Because I did it, right? 
You know, it's like nobody else did it. That was me. That was all me, right? And we went from 800 to now we're at close to uh, 2,500. So within the year, it has been, a, it made a year that I joined community in February uh, that I actually joined. And then the next month will be a year that I've been in Atlanta. So within a year, we've jumped from 800 to 2,500 followers. And I just now am getting a graphic designer and a video editor to kind of help and two interns just now. So you can imagine like whatever I had, I had this whole team that I should have had right from <laughs> From the beginning, yeah. but I did all. So that's the rewarding part. It's like when you hear people say, "Oh, I love your your page. I love what y'all do." Like the the getting Ryan and uh Chris to do TikToks, right? I don't know if y'all ever seen them doing them dancing. Like, can you imagine getting <laughs> two two frat people, right? Two people from, that's from HBCU that are a part of frats. We have Alpha Q's in the office. Getting them to do a TikTok. I mean, I, I should be. Somebody need to call me like, hey, can you get my mom to, you know, like, I, I don't know how I got them to do it. But that was the most rewarding. It's like trying to get some middle aged, like, you know, like they're not me. Like, I'm I'm this crazy fun girl. And then you are you come into the office and they're like, you want me to do what? Like. <gasps> yeah, that's dope. <laughs> um. How do you keep up to date with what works and what doesn't work when it comes to marketing? Hmm. How do I keep? Well, we do use uh, platforms that give us these analytics, right? So uh, we went from using nothing to using Sprout Social, and now we're using Later. Both are platforms that allow you to schedule out content and also give you analytics back on how your content is actually working and how it's doing. Um, and we also use um, we use a, a tactic that's basically like a, a listening tactic for our audience. So we see what does well. Um, when we started to do posts that had to do with like news that happened, what's happening in the gaming industry, we saw that our audience liked it and they engaged with it way more. So by listening, we said, okay, we're going to do more of that, right? So that is not just looking at analytics, right? We saw that it does like we're actually paying attention to what our audience likes. Another example, motivational Mondays, it's real. We just started doing that. I came up with it one day. I said, I'm gonna just go around the office and ask, hey, what what's your Monday motivation? Let's let's give some people some motivation to start off the week. And we started doing that. And the first one did really well, had thousands of views and people liked it and was responding to it, laughing. And it also shows the team. So we were able to pick that up and say, okay. They like it, so let's keep doing it. And that's kind of how we've been picking it up from the numbers and also just what what our audience likes. I like that. Uh, if I was doing all of that like you were, <laughs> I would be so, so stressed. Yes. I'd be tired. I'd be one of taking a nap. You see? <laughs> don't, let this, don't let this pretty skin fool you, okay? <laughs> I am. I am. I am under a lot of pressure, but we work really well as a team what one person can't handle another person picks up like that's how our culture is it doesn't matter yes i am the creative director but sometimes i help tyler who's the director of esports run our league sometimes like talk to the students and they're like everybody picks up pieces like there's there's never a time when someone is like overwhelmed and they like feel like they don't have help and, you know like right now it's a really all of us wear multiple hats and proud to say that we handle it very very well yeah you seem like you handle it very well. Yeah. <laughs> very just I'm trying. Keep going, keep pushing <laughs> through. <laughs> so, um, since everything's moving out so fast, especially with your um with community and even esports in general, and it can be I know it can, like you were just saying you do motivational Mondays and everything can be a little bit stressful so you pick up everybody else's work or help each other out. So, what else do you do like even outside of work to help you recharge your battery or motivate others or have fun a little bit outside of work? Um wow. I mean, my life <laughs> has been about community the past year. I'm not going to Actually no, I'm going to say the past couple of months because we have just been doing so much. Like we went from having maybe an event every two, three months to now it's like two events a month. Um, and that's extremely, that's a lot for the capacity of the team we have. We're not, you know, we're not two. Office of 10 and maybe like three, four virtual people who are spread out throughout the East Coast and the West. So I, I 
I do this all day long, 24 7, 25 days. Like, I do, <laughs> I honestly, I'm like, what do I do? I stream, like I said, but that is also a job to me. You know, like, I do love it, but it's also a job. Like, I have to make sure I'm consistent and I'm engaging with my own community within the Discord that I have and just kind of keeping up with that. But the only thing I can say is that this year I made, um, uh, my New Year's resolution, one of them was to become TikTok famous. And I said, I need to figure out what these kids are in on, right? TikTok. I'm not that old, but TikTok to me, I just didn't understand. I'm like, I don't know what to do, right? So I said, you know what? <laughs> January 1st, I will post three TikToks every day until I get famous. Because I was told that the, the way you do it is just by being consistent and just keep pushing your content out there until that one just blows up and then when that one blows up you capitalize off of it so if it was a video of me eating broccoli then i'm going to eat broccoli for the rest of my life <laughs> like that's how i thought about it so i'm waiting you know you know i i just you know i do pretty well on tiktok so that's kind of how my outlet is like i don't know if y'all have seen tiktok but the little hip dance i just every day mm, 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 just doing the hip dance i'm in my room just all the time just making tiktoks and I do it at work. They're like, you're making a TikTok again? <laughs> yep, wherever we go, another TikTok. I'm like, I'm I'm in this generation now. I don't know about y'all, but I'm 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 going with them. They making money. I don't know if y'all know, they make good money on TikTok. They okay? do. They do. <laughs> like the uh, TikTok babies. Yeah. <laughs> them take yeah. There was there was a TikTok I saw it, and there was a girl and she's like, watch me make fifty thousand dollars on TikTok. I'm right. Like, okay. And you just sit, you, and look, see, look, look, what we're doing right now, we're just watching. I said, no way, I'm about to just keep watching y'all make money in front of my face. Exactly. I can do the same thing, right? So that's kind of, my, that was like what I, so that's kind of what I do to, like, outside of work. That is my outlet. Like, I, I will sit on TikTok for, I, I call it research, because that's, it's research to me, because obviously I'm in marketing. So I also try to figure out ways that we could do that for community. You know, the, it, it all works hand in hand. It does. Um, you were talking about how Twitch is like another job for you. Um, what is some advice that you would give for give someone that wanted to get into Twitch? Oh, okay. Well, that question is very broad because there's different ways you can get into Twitch, right? There's different there's different branches. Twitch is an umbrella, um, especially now. It used to be strictly gaming, but it's an umbrella. You can be on there and do podcasts, just chatting. Or you can be on there and do ASMR. Like Twitch is at this point is now just a, a media outlet. So I, from, from what I'm doing, content creation within gaming, my advice is to create a schedule. That's the first thing I'll always tell people. Um, even if you're, if you feel like, oh, I can't be consistent, at least try to. Because what happens is if you go with the, the mindset that I'm just going to stream when I can, then you won't stream for a week. Right. It's like because you couldn't you couldn't. But if you set the schedule, OK, Mondays and Fridays, even if it's two days of the week, Mondays and Fridays, I'm going to stream for three hours. You feel more obligated to like do it. Mondays here. I can't do nothing else. I got to stream. I didn't stream the past couple of days. I need to stream. And it's fine if you, you know, a sneaky link. We call a sneaky link stream. You like pop in sometimes. Maybe you add an extra one in the week. Good for you. Right. But have that schedule because. It just, it helps with the consistency. And then also meet more people within Twitch. Go into people's Twitch streams, like go in there, talk to them. If you like them, you know, maybe you might, some energy might not work. So you kind of have to like do like some shopping. I call it window shopping. You go around, you like check out some streamers. You see like, okay, I like this one. Okay. You like their emotes. So you start, you might subscribe to them and like you mm -hmm. feel it. And then I'm telling you from there, they will support you back, especially the, the um, minority, which it would be the black streamers, you know, people of color who are streaming. Our community is so strong. Like, I'm telling you, like, we all support each other. We're going to put a tab up for you. If you're streaming, I'm watching you. I might not be, like, paying attention, but I definitely have the view up for you. Like, you're going to get this view. I might co uh, come in and say, hey, I love it. So that's, that's like, my, my advice. Like, get more involved. Like, network. You cannot just stream and expect people to just... It's, that's not how that works. Like you, you have to like put yourself out there. So for people who are shy, this this little area, the the Twitch streaming, you got to break that. Like you have to go out. I mean, I'm obviously with the pandemic, it changed a lot of things for people. You can't really like 
TwitchCon and DreamHack, all those things were closed. Like it wasn't happening, it was virtual. So it made it pretty hard. But now that stuff is opening back up, like I, my advice is if you feel safe enough to go places, like go meet people. Cause I'm, I'm telling you networking is like, it's key. People be doing anything on Twitch. They be falling asleep. Or even <laughs> yeah, sleep streams. I mean, it works. Hey, I've done I've done some crazy things. I've done some crazy <laughs> things, okay? And yeah. I'm I mean, I've seen worse. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, the uncapped streamathons are wild to me. Especially when they let their Alexa control it or their chat control their Alexa. Like and then they'll be like, "Alexa, play this." Like those are really <laughs> funny. Easily, easily easily banned. Okay. <laughs> easily banned. I can't take those risks because I work very closely with Twitch, so that I have to be more careful than my my counterparts because uh, this, Twitch is watching all the time. Mm -hmm. So, in the long run, what do you think? Um, what what do you what is the big picture when it comes to gaming in general? What do you think is going to be the future of gaming in your eyes? <sighs> I really don't want to get into the conversation of meta because it's a long conversation, but I feel like gaming is going to be like, it's going to run everything in terms of like virtual reality. No one is going to need to go anywhere because they can do everything online and gaming will have everything to do with it because we see this in stuff like GTA. We see this in stuff like second life, all these virtual reality worlds. What that's almost like a depiction of what it's going to be when in a few years, it's it's all going to lead. So like people are like, oh, I can do this in a game. I don't really need to like I don't need anything else. Like my social life is here. Like I don't no one's going to be outside. Like, you know, they're like I'm outside. No, no one's going to be touching grass. <laughs> like, I mean, it could be a good and bad thing. So it's like I think we just have to find that healthy balance. Um because that's my biggest concern is that people don't touch grass. It's my friends. It's like a saying now. People say, go touch some grass. Because I know I don't touch grass. And I really need to touch some grass. Like, I need to go out and explore the actual real world. Because oftentimes you get drowned into this virtual reality. Like, you're, all your friends are overseas. You haven't even met these people. You don't even, this person can be crazy. And you've never met them. But that, that's your best friend. Like, you talk to them every day. Like, no, you, you should still go outside, you know, meet some people. So I think gaming is going to be, like, everyone, like, my grandma will be gaming, like, it's in a, in a sense. Like, she, she will be doing some sort of game, like, that requires her to be on her phone or whether it's doing something with her grandkids. Like, that's how I foresee, like, game is, it's, from where it was when I was in high school, oh, it's going to, it's surpassed so fast. I feel that. Yeah, you say grandma. <laughs> My grandma is going to be gaming. Like, <laughs> that is going to happen. <laughs> what do you or community have coming up, and where can people find you? Ha. Well, today's a great day that we're doing this because we just announced it today. Um, what we have coming up is the second annual Verizon Pro Am, which is basically a, a tournament that we have with APC students along with celebrities. So we actually have T Pain, Faye Slag, Brett Gray, which is uh, Jamal from On My Block. We have Alicia Gray, a basketball player. We have Leonard Fournette, like all these celebrities who will be playing in the same lobby um, as HBC students. And we're also going to have Uno being on there too. Um, and that's just like a huge event that's going down on Twitch, March 27th at four o'clock. So that should, yes, that, that is right. I had to make sure <laughs> that's so much. Uh, the next event can't say yet because it hasn't been announced, but stay tuned for that. Um, and we're also uh, continuing to do our lab build outs. We're headed to Morgan State. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> We're going to Morgan State University to do their eSports lab, your eSports lab. Um, so that's super exciting. And then we have some other schools that we're going to be getting through for the summer. Um, and then playoffs for HBC Sports League for our 2K and Madden. Um, that's going to be going down starting in April. So we have that. We're going to see who's going to be our our second champion for the HBC Sports League because this is uh, the second season. Um, and then other than that, you know, we're just – kind of just traveling around, going to events. TwitchCon is coming up, DreamHack, like all these things we're just kind of getting ready for. 
Are you going to TwitchCon? Oh, we are going. We are going to TwitchCon. I will see you there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you again for joining us. It's been a great pleasure and, you know, some giggles, some laughs. It's really amazing what you've been doing, especially for community. A lot. It seems like you were you were a big backbone for them. You was carrying their weight a little bit. You was, you was, you was well, what you had to do. Well, I hope all with, I hope within this whole conversation that you realize how important social media plays a part now. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't used to be that way, but this this is essentially how your communication happens. I mean, no one knows about community unless we're on Instagram at this point. You know, like you can't. There's no other way. Like, and it's not just, um, it's not just social media. It's also your social marketing that you do, like within emails, right? Boots on the ground, going out and like promoting yourself, like at the schools and stuff. So it's, it definitely, it is the backbone and, and we, we hold it down. Me and Chris, you know, we hold it down. We got the team going, doing content. Like all this is, it, it matters, especially. It does, it really does matter. So thank you guys again for watching this week's uh, She Got Game, a celebration of women in gaming conversation with community's creative director, Ms. Karima Winner. Let's give it up. Make sure you guys stay up to date with Morgan State University's eSports program by following at MSU Bears eSports on Instagram, Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter. Also subscribe to our YouTube page where you can watch the replay of this interview. You guys can connect with me. I am Tiana Latrice on all platforms, Twitch, Instagram, Twitter. And that's and, it. <laughs> and you can find me at, on Instagram at, at champagne.chels with two S's. Or you can follow me through the Morgan State Instagram as well. And thank you again for watching. And remember to protect, protect the, the cave. cave.